<clears throat> Hello, good evening and welcome to my Humble Model Railway, Bedstead Junction. Uh, now tonight we're going to be looking at a, a model locomotive I've only just received today. Now I did intend to uh, start this video a little earlier, but uh, I had a little bite to eat for tea and I fell asleep for a little bit. So uh, please, please forgive me because I've... Uh, not long woken up and I'll be taking you through this uh, locomotive now. Very excited to uh, get it out of the box. This is going to be the first time I've uh, unboxed this and um, it's going to be a Great Western Railway uh, 280 and it's going to be a first for me in uh, in, in many ways and uh, all will be revealed in just a few moments time. So without any further ado I think we ought to have a look at this locomotive. Right, so first of all, um, see the first time I would have had this out of the box. Now we're looking at uh, R3006, it's a Hornby locomotive, BR38XX3864 weathered. Okay, just see the end of the box there. Okay, and apparently, from what I can tell, these locomotives actually came like this. Okay, I looked at a similar uh, one for sale at another retailer uh, from the one I bought this. And uh, yes, they did come like this. They don't appear to have, have any history with them. But we'll have a quick look and see uh, what's in the box in just a second. And we're just going to turn the camera around now to just uh, actually do the unboxing itself. So bear with me just a moment. We'll just try to get the camera down there. And we can see what we're doing. There we go. I think that'll be about right. Okay, so first things first. There's this outer covering which comes off. So that's fine there. Let's put that to one side. And you can see it comes in the usual block of ice packaging. So we'll see if we can pull this out from the box. Sorry about my great big mucky paws getting in the way there. Okay, so let's have a look. So it's out. And we appear to just get usual maintenance sheet, class 2800, 3800. So I'm guessing that they, they are mechanically very similar, at least in a model sense. Now just see if we can just get a little bit more light on the subject here. Okay, there we go. That's more like it. So, hey, there we are. So, we're going to get the usual uh, lubrication instructions up there. The red dots here are to lubricate it. Uh, it's going to tell you about body removal. There we go. Um, close cut assembly, close coupling. And uh, DCC fitting. So, it's all there on the second page there. Okay, give us a chance to have a look at that. And then on the back, it tells you about things like how to fit the brake rods and things like television uh, suppression. So that's the instruction leaflet. Now, as far as I'm aware, of the, the no history came with these. But we're going to have a look and see now what's in this, like this block of ice packaging here. So it comes undone in, in the usual way. Right, so now we're getting quite close to seeing the locomotive in all its glory. Now we've got a detail pack here, which appears to have been... No, it's not been opened actually, it's unopened. So in there are drain cocks, brake rigging, another coupler, all kinds of, all kinds of goodies there. You can see what's in the detail pack there. Okay, so that looks all mm -hmm. complete there for me. Ready for me to fit, should I so desire. Now that's going inside the box. And at last, we get to actually seeing the model itself in all its glory. So just bear me just a moment while I pull this off here. There we go. So this just lifts up. And there we got our locomotive <laughs> weathered. Yeah, it's a first, it's a first for me. Now this is the first ever 
uh, weather locomotive that I bought. So we'll be having a close look at this. Now, have any bits fallen off? Well, I hope, I hope not, but uh, let's have a look and see. Let them watch we come. Oh, yes. Okay, now there's a lot to be, lots of uh, look at this. A uh, look at with this model. And in fact, there's so much to talk about, there is a possibility this uh, video might run on for quite some considerable time. But um, for those of you who are frequent viewers of my channel, you know that will be the case. Okay, uh, I will probably overrun the intended length for this video. Let's put this down here now, we can see there. Okay, so we can see the locomotive in all its glory. Zoom in a little bit. Try about this, a choy pot a little bit. Uh, this is um, quite an inexpensive choy pot. Does the job. We'll be looking at this quite closely. I can see where the weathering has been applied. And it's very, very effective. And I'll explain to you why, what got me to go, go, go for this. Now, first of all, before we get too, uh, too deep into this, a shout out to A.D. Pullen, okay, who recommended this to me, he spotted it, and um, I went on to it. I bought this from a, a dealer called KJB Models, and I bought this uh, more, almost immediately, and um, it's really a, de a, de a development of, uh, in some ways, of, a, of another locomotive that I already have uh, on the track, okay, which you might not have seen yet, but we're going to put the two together later on for comparison purposes. Now, I think without any further ado, we're going to have a look and see if this locomotive actually works. Okay, so, and we'll have a closer look on the Lazy Susan later on as well. So you can see that's my usual uh, vantage point there for pushing trains onto the track. Okay, so let's have a look now. Okay, so what we're going to uh, see now is does this locomotive actually uh, work? Yes, it runs forwards. Yes, it runs backwards. Right, so, because it's a, use, uh, a, a previously uh, used model, I would guess it's probably already been run in. So we're going to try and see if we can couple up with this train. Uh, we might have to use the uh, the hand of the giants, but we'll see. Now that sounded very, very positive. Now we're going to let this model uh, run around the track just for a few minutes. And we'll talk about the locomotive itself and the uh, the class of locomotive itself and why they were built. Well, so I think this is a, a fairly reasonable, reasonable freight speed. Well, now it appears to be running very, very well. And this locomotive uh, looks magnificent uh, going around the track. Absolutely superb. It's in uh, BR, an early BR livery. So it's got the early crest. And we'll have a look at the we'll seal of this later on. And... The early crest would have been uh, what the locomotive would have had between uh, nationalisation in 1948 and 1956. And as we see straight out of the box, it's a good runner. Absolutely superb. No, com no, no complaints whatsoever about the running qualities of this locomotive. Now it's a 280 freight engine. 
and in the development of an earlier uh, class. In fact, there's a 28 double X, and then there was a 38 double X. So the 28 double X was introduced by George Jackson Churchward in the uh, early 1900s, and these were developments um, of that locomotive, and this was designed by Charles Benjamin Collett. Absolutely superb. I'll just have a look at the uh, track just around here. So I've only just assembled this track. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely fine. Now we'll have a little talk about the locomotive class itself. It's a Great Western Railway 2884 class. It's a class of uh, 280 steam locomotives. They were college development of Churchworth's earlier 2800 class and are sometimes like regarding belonging to that class. They were designed for heavy freight work and differ from the original of class engines 2800 in a number of respects. It was obvious being the more collet, uh, more modern collet side window cap. Now that is true. Uh, Collet, when he when he redesigned um, some of the Churchward locomotives and uh, they were later built after he took over in 1922, I believe. Um, his way of development was to fit a more comfortable cab. Uh, the Churchward cabs were a little bit more um, smaller, okay, and did not have side windows. And in fact, that is a way of uh, differentiating a, a Churchward design locomotive to a college design locomotive, in that they will have much larger cabs with side windows, and that's what this locomotive evidently has. So it does immediately uh, point it out as one of what well, they were numbered um, on the locomotive 30, 3800 class. Uh, there are 83 of these locomotives built between 1938 and 1942. Very, very popular. In, in fact, uh, it was requested after the war that more lo locomotives would be built, but it, uh, BR decided to go with the, with the 9Fs. But really, only, it was only with the building of these uh, of the 9F standard class locomotives that these locomotives were in some way eclipsed. Now these were used, although these were used on freight, so you can see they were being used on freight in, in its uh, weathered grimy condition, okay, which we'll look at, uh, see more closely quite shortly. These were actually pressed into service on passenger trains. And in fact, that is a lot to say about um, busy summer Saturdays. They're right up until the late 1950s, early 1960s, the summer Saturday could have very much have been regarded as a, a scene of great, great uh, chaos on the Great Western Railway. And then on the Great West, on the on the Western region of British Rail, after nationalisation, Summer Saturday would be the great changeover, where passengers would be either arriving or leaving their destinations. Now, of course, this, this is my first ever weathered locomotive. Do I like this lo weathered locomotive? The answer to that question is an absolute yes, okay. Um, would I weather a locomotive I've actually bought in what they would call the pristine condition? Probably not at this stage. I would probably only purchase locomotives that have already been weathered. Now one of the wagons is, uh, is in one of the curves here and there's a little bit of a like a kind of, I know, you might be able to hear it going over the track. Uh, I've looked for a defect in the track, and it don't appear to be BNA. There's probably just one of these locomotives, uh, sorry, one of these wagons, uh, how they actually behave on curves. 
Apparently the side windows were left out during the war. Uh, probably because of blackouts. So they were actually had blanking plates. But the side windows were actually reinstated on the locomotives after the war. Now, how does this locomotive compare with the earlier 2800 class? In model form. Well, we'll get a chance to have a look at that, okay? And there are some quite interesting differences. And even though you would think it's a no contest, uh, the earlier Margate, uh, Margate design version would be like squash under the wheels of this one. It's not quite so clear cut. Okay, and we'll be doing a comparison between the two models. And this is why this video might run on a little bit because I'm going to show you briefly um, the both locomotives together, and you'll be able to uh, we'll be able to see what the differences are between the two models and between the two classes. Okay, so we're looking at Great Western, the differences in the Great Western Railway respect, and the differences between the earlier models in the Hornby respect. Okay, so. We're going to be getting, getting it all tonight, hopefully. I hope you're enjoying uh, watching this as much as uh, I am. Now, there were nine of these locomotives actually preserved. Which goes to show the value of them. And, of course, on preserved railways, you're going to see them pulling passenger trains. There were experiments made on oil firing on these uh, between 1945 and 1947. Coal shortages caused the Great Western Railway to experiment with oil fired 2800 locomotives, and eight of the 2884 class were converted every number from 4850. Now, in fact, some of these oil firing experiments caused the what was the, the some of the oath. The tank engines to be actually renumbered in the Fortune Double X class. Uh, oil firing experiment was uh, abandoned in 1948 once um, extra maintenance costs were calculated and the bill was a uh, bill arrived for the imported oil. Okay, so let's get into the model. So we're giving you some uh, quite a nice little bit of history here. And you will see some evidence of these locomotives in their service on the Great Western Railway and on the Western region of British Rail. And I'm going to be giving you a book recommendation. Sometimes you get these book recommendations. I know not all of you uh, want to uh, read up on the, real, on the actual real locomotives, but we have to bear in mind now when we're buying these models, these are models of something that existed in real life and actually served the Great Western Railway on Western Region of British Rail and all the other railways in real life also. So, so we have to imagine these locomotives actually in service toiling away on heavy freight trains and sometimes deputising on those busy summer Saturdays. I'm just going to level up the uh, camera just briefly because we're going to have a quick look at the book. This look, this book. If you are a Great Western fan, and you don't know this book. Own this book. You are missing out in an enormous degree. Um, we're going to zoom out, which we can. Great Western Steam in the West Country, the Norman Lockett Collection. Uh, Norman Lockett, a friend of Ivo Peters. Uh, Mike Aronetz and David Lockett. Um, comp uh, comp uh, chose all the pictures that go in here. And you can see this has got a wealth of, of information. Now, we're going to just stop this locomotive just briefly.
And this is one of the other, um, I hope nobody has a go at me for copyright. Because I'm promoting, I'm actually going to be promoting this book and saying you should get this book. This is just going to be teasers, tasters, okay, for the Norman Lockett Connection. That's one of these locomotives pulling a freight train. And you can see it in, in its uh, weather condition, okay, which uh, we'll be able to see in a moment on our uh, locomotive here. And uh, evidence that these locomotives were used on passenger trains. And it's the above left on this uh, particular one. And it's just showing one of these locomotives putting a passenger train. Okay. During the 1950s, the impressive Church War 280 mixed traffic locomotives can be seen particularly during peak summer season on express passenger duties. This one uh, eases an excursion of the points leading, leading into Locking Road Station. Locking Road Station near West Super That was on the 12th of August 1956 that picture was taken. So that shows one of these locomotives. 280s putting express passenger trains. Right, so without any further ado, we'll watch the locomotive go around one more time. So I'm quite enjoying this running session. Okay, and I'm going to go and get the Lazy Susan. Well, now this locomotive is managing these uh, this freight train running it. Uh, we're running it freight speed, let's say. Or let's let's just throw it right down. You can imagine this labouring its way over the Great Western Railway, pulling freight. Freight, a very very important um, feature of the Great Western Railway. In fact, a lot of railways. Right, the noise you can hear actually. It's not the locomotive um, itself making any noise, we can hear that. I can hear a little rattling noise, but it, it see, I thought it was as it's going around the curves, but it's not. It's when one of these wagons actually hits a level crossing here. I don't know if you can hear the sound in a minute. In a minute. Let's give it a go. You'll hear it in a minute. Go through the level crossing. That's when my little China clay wagon goes through there. Okay, so... Next, I'm going to stop the camera now. I'm going to have this locomotive put up on the Lazy Susan. Okay, so here we have the locomotive on the Lazy Susan. We can spin this round. So I just kick the tripod then. The wonders of live video. There we go, and I can see what I'm doing now. Uh, here we go. So now let's get this. Uh, a pointer, something I can point with. Ah, oh, that'll be fine. Let's hold up. Bear with me. Look for a pointer. Right, we can use this paintbrush to point with. Right now, we can see where the locomotive has been weathered. Uh, it's been weathered on the cab. Um, the wheels have been weathered. So that's an example of the, the, the grimy condition that these locomotives could get them could be uh, find themselves in, and also on the cylinders, we can see the weathering's been applied there. Very very effective weathering job. I'm very very pleased with this. A lot of detail on this locomotive, which we'll go over in a moment as well. Um, Now, I think we can see it from here. You can see where the valve gear has been, inner valve gear has been represented in red, in between there. That's something which you didn't get on the previous Hornby locomotives. Also, I believe that the um, the twenty eight hundred class did not have outside steam pipes, whereas these have. Okay, so you can see that there. 
also on freight on a lot of the freight locomotives the safety valve bonnet tended to be painted black okay but it's got uh, nice whistles there represented in brass and you can clearly see the Collett's design cab here with the side windows whereas a churchward uh, locomotive they they would have a much shorter cab and it'd be like just a, a C section there a slot for the uh, driver to poke his head round okay now the weathering continues onto the wheels of the um, tender itself as well and this bring I think this brings to life uh, of, of what it would be like to be with a, an actual working locomotive with for example a crew as well toiling away producing the steam to get the, to get the freight to their respective destinations Let's take a look at the front of the locomotive now. Focus on that. You have to excuse me because the tripod is a bit stiff here uh, tonight. Okay. So the number there we can see three eight six four. Uh, just below the smoke box start. Shed number plate. Let's zoom right in there. Get some detail going for you. I hope this is nicely in focus. Um, what other things you get? Okay. One thing. Uh, one thing. A lot of people want to know it. Do we have sprung buffers? Yes, we do, and even the buffers have been weathered. So I don't want to spoil the weathering effect there with by poking it with the, with the paintbrush. Okay, so uh, you've got a uh, separately fitted dart, lamp iron, lovely rail over there, buffer in red. Well, that's been weathered. And on this side, we can uh, bring the camera up a little bit. We won't zoom right out yet, but you can clearly see now on this side how effective the weathering's been on this particular locomotive. What do I think? Absolutely superb. Absolutely superb. Let's take a look down at the tender and again you can see where the uh, the grime has been applied which these locomotives would have uh, collected in service of course when they were sir when they were actually uh, service at Swindon works uh, given an overhaul they were then given a, a good clean and they would have looked quite pristine then but this is what it looks like would have looked like on the BR Western region in the late 40s through to the mid 1950s. Okay, so you can clearly see the early crest here. And I hope that those people who are watching this video will stick with me on this because there's so much, much to say and I, I cannot include everything in one video so sometimes I may have to come back to a, a subject later and a, and a locomotive just to include um, a lot of the things that I'd like to say um, this one does receive a fully detailed cab and we're going to bend the tender round slightly because I think we can show this to some advantage ok let's uh, have a go at getting the uh, get focus on that cab ok so I hope you can see the cab fully detailed cab and that is brilliant now you might not be able to see it from here, but those dials have actually got detail painted on. You can see the dials there in white. Those de the detail there has been actually painted on. Everything's been picked out. You can see the brass fittings, everything else. The reversing rod, uh, reversing um, the gear, and everything, perfect. Okay, and yes, yeah, so those dials do. Uh, you can barely see it from here where I can but you can see those dials 
have actually got have actually got the uh, the needles put on them and everything else. So the, the, there are details on the dials as well. Absolutely superb. Am I glad I bought this locomotive? You betcha. Right, so let's uh, just straighten the tender up. And we'll take a look at the uh, the, the back of the uh, tender now. Oh, look at that. You can see the cab beautifully there as well now as well. Look at that. So let's... Uh, Zoom out slightly and we'll uh, try to uh, bring the camera down slightly. Let's hope I've got focus here. Okay, um, probably um, you can see here the vacuum pipe has been fitted to the rear of the locomotive but not to the front. I'm hoping that there'll be a vacuum pipe actually in the uh, detail pack. Um, if not, I can always get one of those anyway. You, you you can buy. In fact, I think it's hard to tell what's in the detail pack, isn't it? No, there's no one in the detail pack. I can always fit one of those if necessary. That's not a problem. But you can see on the back, you do get them. Uh, you get the um, again the sprung buffers. A rear coupling has been fitted. You've got the option of fitting um, a front coupling. It's got the NEM coupling on it. The hook. Lamp irons. All present. Absolutely superb. Right. Okay. Uh, for those of you who missed it at the beginning. This is R3006 BR38XX3864 weathered. DCC ready. Minimum radius 2. Would I recommend this locomotive if you can find one? Oh yes. Absolutely magnificent. Absolutely magnificent. And I hope you've enjoyed the, the, the look around on the Lazy Susan. Oh, another detail which I didn't uh, mention. It's on this side here. You can clearly see the reversing gear there. So you can tell from this that Great Western locomotives are in fact right hand drive. And I had I, mean, I don't want to get on my high horse about this, but I have seen people where they've added local crew and they put the driver and the fireman on the wrong side. Okay, they it's all they meant well when they've done it, okay. But um, it's one of those things, I don't want to sound like Mr. Rivet Canter and know it all and everything else. But that's one thing which I put a lot of effort into, into researching first. And of course the giveaway where you should be putting the driver is the same side as where the reversing gear is. So the driver in fact will go on the right hand side of the cab and the fireman will go on the left. Uh, NMS and any of the other engines and southern engines, it can vary. So you need to do your research before you actually add a loco crew, okay? And sorry if that sounds like me getting on my high horse, but I think it's something which is important and it's really important to remember. Coming back to the back end of this tender, something I forgot to mention. Open on your focus now. You do get separately fitted handrails here and here and in fact all in all this locomotive is uh, magnificent and once again okay if I haven't said it already I'd like to thank AD, 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 uh, Adrian Pullin, AD Pullin for uh, messaging me and pointing out this locomotive was on sale um, from KJB Models uh, I bought this uh, uh, from eBay, um, their shop on eBay. Uh, the reason being for me, um, eBay offers a click and collect service. And I can go and collect the locomotive. It's a personal preference. I could go and collect the locomotive and that's what I was able to do this afternoon. I drove, drove over, picked the locomotive up and brought it back. Um, 
rather than it being posted directly to my um, home address, the advantage of that being I don't have to sit in waiting for it to, uh, uh, to, to come. Okay, so I was able to just pick this up. You can see this locomotive again, absolutely superb. Look at that. You can see the weathering on there being applied. Absolutely beautiful. Absolutely superb. Okay, so me waxing lyrical about this, yes. And quite deservedly so. Brilliant. Now what we're going to do now is we're going to come back to having this locomotive running. And please bear with me, for those of you who have stuck with me so long, uh, for this long on this video, please stick with me to the end because, uh, I mean, if you can watch it all in one go, uh, try and watch it in parts maybe. Um, I don't want to release this video in parts, like part one, part two, say quarter of an hour sections. Um, for, for, for me, I'd rather get the video all shot, all in, all in one go. And um, that's what I'm doing here. And we are going to go back to the running session. And we're going to see the earlier Churchward locomotive and this locomotive on the line together. And we can do a quick brief comparison with the older model by Hornby. And this newer model. This newer model is much more highly detailed. Um, but the um, earlier tender driven model, which you'll be, you're going to be seeing in a minute, and for comparison purposes, has got a trick up its sleeve, okay? So we'll go into that in just a moment. Right, now we're going to do a little bit of uh, manoeuvring, a little bit of shunting in a moment. But first of all, <coughs> Right, what I'd like to find out, what we need to know is, what is this locomotive like over points, considering it's a, it's a 280 locomotive, okay? Now it's going to be going into a right-hand curve, and then into a left-hand, a right-hand point into a left-hand point, and into a left-hand curve. So this should be quite interesting to see, and you'll be watching this locomotive going, going into the uh, good shed in just a moment. So we'll just see how we do. Now, low speed running, absolutely superb on this uh, locomotive. It's uh, walked over low points. Okay. Very, very, I'm very, very conservative on the controller. Now, I need to be very, very careful now going in. But I don't ever run the points, okay? So. Um, and I don't go off the end of the siding. We're quite crammed on here. Well, I think we'll, that'll be all right. So you can see this locomotive made short work of those points. Right, we only just made that was close. Right, okay, so we had a slight technical hitch on this uh, one here with one of my locomotives. And just need to bear with me, I'll explain to you what happened. Okay, so this is my uh, tender driven earlier Church War 2800 class going round the thing, and you can probably hear the motor going. Part of the ring for the motor. It's got a, a um, the reason why um, I had a slight trouble getting this one out of the siding was because of the curse of the small layout. Now, I'm not complaining, so I feel very, very lucky to have a layout like this. But many people will probably love to be able to run a little layout like this. Is that um, it did collide with it did collide with the brake van of the other train. And as you probably see, it, it does, it was a little bit hesitant. These locomotives, because they don't get run very often, can end up a little bit arthritic if they've been in the box for too long. And in fact, you'll see now, it's now picking up speed and running very, very well. Now, this locomotive has got a, 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 a chunk card up its, uh, up its sleeve. 
I don't know if you can see it going round now. I don't know if you can see it. Yes, you can. You can see it. This one, believe it or not, a model which came probably from the very, very late 1990s, early 2000s maybe, is a China built locomotive but it's tender powered. It's got a pyrobox glow. Now it's only up until recently that we started to see firebox glow again. Now, uh, it may have been that, the, that Hornby thought it was best to show off the details of their cab on their, on their newer models. But, this one does in fact have that feature. So make sure where it does have that feature. And we're going to do a little bit of manoeuvring and you'll be seeing these two locomotives side by side shortly. Right, so what we're going to hopefully see now is this uh, magnificent uh, Hornby locomotive with its freight train put into the passenger station, okay? So it's going to be my way of showing a couple of things. How this locomotive cooked with points, and it did very, very well too. And we'll just turn the camera around now a little bit, so we'll watch it gracefully glide into the station. Absolutely superb. Right, so what we've got now is we've got both locomotives side by side. Now if you were looking at this locomotive strictly from the top or looked at, looked at each locomotive closely <coughs> You could, you'll be able to see the differences. I mean, <clears throat> this one is in. <clears throat> so I got fun with it. This one is in its pristine condition, as it would be out shot, possibly. Okay. And this one is weathered. Okay. Do I like pristine or weathered? If a locomotive came factory weathered I would have no hesitation in, in buying one now okay uh, so my uh, weather my weathered locomotive phobia is now cured by me buying this locomotive couple of differences between the two I mean this is the early tender power locomotive okay so you've got the high coal load that's one at the back it's in great western livery uh, it's not got the um, separately fitted smoke box darts and other details like that and it's also not got the Volve gear represented in between, okay, so that's just a straight flat running plate. Also, you can see possibly the differences between the two cabs, okay. The Collet cab has got the side window, and the Churchwell cab has just the C shaped cutouts, okay. So those are the main differences. So, like I say, this one is magnificent for its detail. The coal load's a lot better. Okay, and we'll... But this one has got the glowing firebox. Well, this one's got the more detailed cab. Okay, and I think probably... I don't, I don't know, you can only guess why, what goes on in Hornby's or anybody else's mind when they design a model railway locomotive. Perhaps they decided to maintain all the detail of the cab. And um, But then, if you have a look at their latest Evening Star um, 9F, which I reviewed, that one does have a, a glowing firebox. Okay, so that's something which they stopped putting in their later, some of their later models. Okay, I hope you, I mean, that's a... a a sort of a reasonably quick comparison because you don't get sprung buffers on the earlier model but I think really I mean you look at everything in life for advantages and disadvantages and I think these are both magnificent models this would I do I, like I say do I regret buying this no not for one second absolutely magnificent okay that's a close-up uh, view of the, uh, both locomotives there now you can see the red inner valve gear. This one doesn't possess that. 
brilliant absolutely brilliant of course this one is in br black weathered this one is in br green in sort of pristine condition now what we're going to try and do is um we're going to try and see if we can reverse this one back out of the station we'll show it up on the junction there you'll see it go by in just a moment let's let's, no, let's, let's start off from here let's see if we can pan round and uh the tripod's a bit stiff but we'll see if we can do it right rim reverse let's see if we can follow the locomotive out that is absolutely superb the running qualities of this is superb I mean, for realism, I would expect it to have pickups in all of the uh, in all of the wheels. Okay, I think it has because it's got the electrical connection between the uh, front and the rear. Now, excuse my self guessing in the way a little, but we'll do a quick change of points, and we'll just do a recap. Quick recap. Uh, we changed the points correctly. We have. Okay, so let's watch this locomotive go through the uh, power station there, and we can see both locomotives there. This one possibly running on uh, at freight speeds. Absolutely superb. I'm really enjoying this. Uh, we're getting up to, to uh, near, near quarter to ten now. And the evening is Thursday, uh, the 19th of September 2024. Now, if you've enjoyed watching this uh, video, as much as I've enjoyed making it, then please, please, please put um, hit that like button. It does help my channel. And if you've not subscribed to my channel, uh, please consider subscribing. Uh, it doesn't cost you anything to subscribe, okay? But it does help my channel. I'm getting very, very tantalizingly close to 500 subscribers, okay? And crossing that landmark would mean a lot to me. Okay, I'm not worried. I'm not worried in, in, in monetizing the channel or anything like that. Okay, what I'm thinking of really is, is that I can share these models with as wide an audience as possible. And um, if you're not subscribed yet, should you subscribe, you can then be made aware of uh, any future videos which I'll be making, and you might find that they're of interest. And I'd be really, really honoured if you were to watch my locomotives and my videos okay like I say I've only just bought this locomotive today sorry if it's running on late into the evening but like I say um, I did have a bite to eat and sat down and I nodded off hence my uh, late start in, in actually producing this video Am I pleased with this model? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. And on that note, I don't really want to end this running session. I'm going to probably keep on running for another hour after I've actually... I'm going to keep this locomotive running round actually for a while. But I'm actually going to go ahead and edit this video now. So for now actually, I'll bid you farewell. And good night.